Number nine then from the specimen paper for the new hire, this is paper two, it's the area under curves. It looks like the area between two curves but not strictly so because this curve finishes before the end of the area. So you have to consider the best way to get that shaded portion. Well, the two curves are trigonometrical ones. You've got all the information here, so it's just a case of start integrating. So, how will you get at this area? Now, it looks like the area between two curves, but it's not, because this lower curve doesn't go all the way from one end to the other end of the area. It stops part of the way. You couldn't do top, take away bottom, because it would have to stop at pi upon four. Then you'd have to use something else to get the rest of it. It's best just to look at it as the big chunk, take away this little chunk. So the big chunk here, what's the area under this function? Well, call that area one. So the big one goes from zero to two pi up and three of sine three quarters of x minus three pi up and two dx. Be pretty suspicious looking, I'll mention that later, we'll just carry on. Now sine would have come from cos, but it would have had to come from a negative cos. And it isn't just of x, it's of some function of x. So you've got a function of a function. If you were differentiating, you'd have multiplied by the derivative, which is the coefficient of x. You'd have multiplied by 3 quarters, so here I'll have to divide by 3 quarters. Dividing by 3 quarters is the same as multiplying by 4 upon 3. So that's what it comes to. So that's what's got to be evaluated from 0 to 2 pi upon 3. As before, the first thing I'll have to do is put in the limits. So it's negative 4 upon 3. That's not a very good looking 3. Cos of 3 quarters of... 2 pi upon 3, minus 3 upon 2 pi, pretty nasty. And then it's minus the same thing again. So why not just keep that minus 3 quarters as a factor outside of it. So instead of minus and then another minus 4 upon 3, just minus in a bracket, cos of, and this time it's going to be, I think we can safely just put 0 minus 3 upon 2 pi. Now you could merely press the buttons in your calculator, but I'm just going to do it without a calculator because that'll tidy up. Because the threes cancel, that's pi up in two, minus three pi up in two, so that's just minus pi. So it's four thirds of the cosine of negative pi, and that's minus the cosine of negative three upon two pi. Now the thing about the cosines are they're symmetrical. The cosine curve looks like this, so it's the same on both sides. So the cosine of negative pi is the same as the cosine of pi. So that'll be negative 1. So I've got negative 4 upon 3 times negative 1 minus. And the cosine of negative 3 upon 2 pi is the same as the cosine of 3 upon 2 pi, which is just 0. So you've got negative 1 times negative 4 upon 3. So A1 is just 4 upon 3 units squared. Get rid of that before we get any comments. Now what about this little area here? Just do this here. Area 2. It goes from 0 to pi upon 4. That's much more harmless looking this time. Cos 2x dx. Can I fit this all in here? That'll go back to sine, and it's a positive sine. It's a function of a function, so differentiating, you'd have multiplied by 2. Integrating, divide by 2. That's to be evaluated from 0 to pi upon 4. So, put the numbers in, it'll be a half of the sine of 2 times pi upon 4, minus a half of, well no point putting it in twice, so I'll just keep it outside, minus the sine of 2 times 0, which is 0. Now that's pi upon 2, the sine of pi upon 2 is 1, so it's a half of 1, minus the sine of 0 is 0. If you're not sure, you just think of the sine graph. The sine of pi upon 2 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. So that just comes to a half of a square unit. And that was area 1, and that was area 2. And then finally, the shaded area will be the big one, take away the wee one. A1 minus A2, 
4 upon 3 minus 1 upon 2. Change them both into sixths. That will be 8 sixths. Take away 3 sixths, which is 5 sixths. And that's it. Done. Now that suspicious bit there, this suspicious expression here, because if that's the cosine of some multiple of x, this is this trigonometrical curve is doing exactly the same same thing, starting at the top and finishing on the axis. That must also be some cosine of some multiple of x. Just like in this one here. Cos should finish at pi upon 2. So if it finishes at pi upon 4 instead, then that will give this multiple here the frequency, if you like, and that comes to a 2. So that must have been cos 2x. So same with this one. If that's a cos, it should finish at pi upon 2. If it finishes here instead, divide by that. Well, this time I'll do it the other way around. I'll multiply by the reciprocal, and that cancels out to 3 quarters. That means that must really be the curve y equals cos 3 quarters x, this whole thing. Then I could have done it the same way as that. Well, you might have been suspicious and thought, well, wait, so let's just multiply that out. And that's sine 3 quarters x cos 3 upon 2 pi minus cos 3 quarters x sine 3 upon 2 pi. And then just thinking of the curves, cos of 3 upon 2 pi is 0. And sine of 3 upon 2 pi is negative 1. So that just ends up as the cosine, as before, the cosine of 3 quarters x. So you could have found area 1 just doing that then. It's the integral from 0 to 2 pi upon 3 of cos 3 quarters x dx. So I'll go back to sine 3 quarters x. Divide by 3 quarters, so it's 4 upon 3. 0 to 2 pi up in 3. It's looking much simpler than it was before. And the problem was you had to go through this to get that simplified expression. But it was probably worth it to save all that stuff that was going on in there before. So that will be 4 up in 3. The sine of 3 quarters of this. 3 quarters of 2 pi up in 3. Minus 3 quarter, 4 up in 3. I will just keep it outside then since they're going to share it anyway, and that's just of sine 0. Now what's that? That's pi up in 2. That's 1. So it's 4 up in 3 times 1 minus 0, which is, as before, 4 up in 3. So I think if you'd taken the time, actually, just to simplify that expression, that would have been quicker in the end. Now, there is a quick way to get this answer without any integration whatsoever, but you couldn't do it in the exam because it's an integration question. It's just for a matter of interest. The area under the sine and cosine curves are the same. It's the same curve. The area in each quarter of sine x, just sine x, not sine 2x or 3 sine x, just of y equals sine x, the area in each quarter is exactly one square unit. So if you change this by saying, for instance, I want 2 sine x, so it's going up to twice the height, but the same width, it'll be 2 units. If I want the area in sine 2x, so it's got the same height but half the width, it'll be half a square unit. So in this one here, that part there, that cosine, that's cos 2x, so it's half the width, so that area must be half of a square unit. Remember, each quarter is one unit. And this one, since it turned out to be cos of 3 quarters of x, since that's a proper fraction, it means it will actually expand it then in the same way as this. That area should be 1, but divided by the 2 made it half. That area should be 1, but divided by the 3 quarters makes it 4 upon 3. And then you get it straight away. 4 upon 3 minus a half. Just by playing around with the fact that the area under each of the quarters of the trig graphs is 1 unit. Just for interest, don't do it in the exam.